My name is Peter Verhash and I am a senior Java developer. This video tutorial is about Java access modifiers. These are very basic and simple things. You can find many tutorials about it. What is the point to create another tutorial? Because you may not know all the details, all the nuts and the bolts of Java access rules as they are complex. If you start to watch this video, then just after a few minutes, you will feel like, hey, I didn't know this. Is it worth knowing all these fine details? Well, if you are a Java professional, then at least you are supposed to know these simply out of pride. If you really know all the bits and pieces, then just relax and enjoy the ride. I will talk about the simple cases that everybody knows. Sorry, I cannot skip that part. Then we will visit more complex scenarios, like private members of inner classes. We will also look at what Jigsaw is, the Java platform module system introducing to Java regarding access control. There are three access modifiers in Java. These are language keywords that modify the access level of class members. These keywords are private, protected and public. With these and with the obvious default case when we do not use any modifier, there are four access levels in Java. These are private, package access when we do not use any access modifier keyword in front of the member declaration, protected and public. What are these access levels? What every junior knows is that private members are visible only in the same class and it is true, almost. Similarly, package private is when we do not specify any modifier and it is visible only in the same package, almost. Protected is the same as package private and it is also visible from classes that extend the defining class, almost. And finally, public is visible from everywhere and again, only almost. If we want to visualize this, the diagram will look something like this. Even though this structure is only almost, it is worth understanding it as a first approach, because in most of the practical cases, it is enough to know these. By the way, this is the reason why most of the junior developers only know this. Private is in the class, Package private is in the package, protected is in the package, and child classes and public everywhere. Almost. After this part, you will learn more. But now, there is time to have a short demo of all these. In this demo, we have a few classes in two packages. There is a package A and the package B under javax0.blog.demo.accessmodifiers. Class A defines four methods, one private, one package access, many times referred to as package private or default, a protected and the public. There is also a main that calls these methods. Also, we have a class main calling class A methods that also contains a main with the same code trying to call all the same methods. In this file, there is an error as signaled by the IDE. The private method cannot be invoked because this code is in a different top level class and therefore it cannot access the private method, which is in the different top level class. We also have a class named main extending class A calling class A methods, which is the same as the previous one, but this one is extending the original class, class A. There is no surprise. 
We are in the same package, but in a different class. We can call any method except the private one. We also have a class B, which is in the package B. We again try to call the methods from here. We can call from here only the public method. Finally, we have a class, class extends class A, that is in the package B, but it extends the class A. In this case, because we extend the class A, we can call the protected method as well. However, we warned that this is a simple case. We will see later that this is not that simple. Nevertheless, the code above works after commenting out the error lines. Now we can start the main methods one after the other and see that the methods are really invoked. When we run the local main method, which is in the same class where our methods are, then the output shows that all the methods are invoked. When we run the main method from the other class, then only the private method that we have to comment out is not invoked. When we run the main method from the other class that extends the original class, then we get the same result. Running the main method of the other class in the other package, we can only invoke the public method. Finally, running the main method of the class that is in the other package but extends the original class, we can invoke the public method and also the protected method. Let's talk about private first and as a warm-up, let's discuss something that really should be obvious for every junior. But after many hundreds of technical interviews, I can say that this is actually not. At first, it was a surprise for me, but then I had to learn that many junior developer thinks that private fields can only be accessed if the code is executing on the same object, the same class instance. This is not true. If the code is running in a static method, or if the code is running in an instance method, or in a constructor, or in some initializer block, and the code has a reference to an instance of the class, then the code can read and modify the private fields using the object reference, even if it is not the same as the actual object, which is referenced by the this keyword. By the way, the same is true for private methods, with the small correction that in this case of method, we cannot talk about reading and modification. The operation in this case of a method is invocation. In other words, we can call the private method on the other object. If you believed so far that private is instance bound and the code cannot access private members of a different instance, then let's have a look at how the equals method is implemented in a Java class. Here we have a simple class that contains two private, a protected, and a public field. There can be other fields and methods in a real-life code. In our case, we only want to compare the instances of this class based on the equality of the values of these fields. Let's create an equals method. We will use the editor built-in code generator to create the code for us. Every IDE has this functionality and they usually generate appropriate code. The IDE does not offer the generation of the equals method without the hash code, because equals and hash code have to be implemented in a consistent way, and this way the IDE does not promote the generation of the one without the other. 
However, equals and hash code are a whole other topic that we may talk about in a different tutorial. We select all fields as guaranteed as a non-null. Do not think too much about it. We only do that to have a code from the generator that is simpler, missing the null checks that are none of our concerns for now but only for now. In real life, it's a crucial issue. By now, we are not interested in the hash code method. What we can see is a more or less conventional and standard equals method. It returns true if the two objects are the same or if the two objects are instances of exactly same class or the other class is a subclass of our class and the fields are equal. In case of primitives, the equality is checked using the equal operator. In case of object, the equality is checked calling the equals method. What we have to notice here is that the method can access all the fields on the this instance, but also on the that instance, even in case of private fields. The access is not forbidden and it is not restricted to the same object. When we discussed first private, we said that a private member is only visible only in the same class almost. Why is this almost? Because the Java language specification says something different. And the case when the code accessing the field, method, and so on is in the same class is only a special case. The Java language specification does not say that it is the same class. It says it a bit differently. You can download the Java language specification from the URL above and you can use the QR code with your phone so you do not need to type in the URL. But what does the Java language specification say on page 176 in the example 6.6-5? It says that private class members, in other words, methods, fields, inner classes, inner interfaces, inner enums, and in addition to the members, the private constructors, so essentially everything can be declared private and can happen to be inside a class are accessible if the code calling or accessing the private member is in the same top level class as the member itself. Either or both the code accessing the member and the member itself can be in an inner class or interface or enum. The private members are accessible if they are in the same top-level class. In other words, private is visible from the same source file. This is depicted on this rudimentary picture. Such an access makes sense. When the developer edits a Java source file, they edit something that has high cohesion. These things belong together. If they do not belong together, then they should not be in the same file. But if they belong together, there is no reason to hide anything using access control inside one single source file. In this demo, we have a top-level class that contains two inner classes. Out of one also contains a third inner class. All the methods are private and all the four classes that we have in this single source file have a public static void main method that calls all the private methods and they just print out method top, method inner, one, method inner, two, method inner, inner, and they have no problem calling these methods just from any class level.
package access. Here the almost is not that big of an issue, but with some Java developer position on some interviews, this small tiny thing may still make the difference between getting the job or a refusal. The statement that the default access is package access when we are not specifying any modifier is only true when the member is in a class. If the member is in an interface, then the default is public. Protected. The almost in case of the protected is that a protected member is visible outside of the package only in subclasses, only by the code that is responsible for the implementation of that object. On the page 176, the specification says that a protected member or constructor of an object may be accessed from outside the package in which it is declared only by code that is responsible for the implementation of that object. There is a sample code two pages later. In this demo project, we have reproduced this example. We have the packages points and three points and the classes point and point 3D. Point 3D extends the parent class point. In this, the method delta cannot access the protected member x and y of the parameter p because this code is not involved in the implementation of point. The method delta3d can access the protected members of its parameters q because the class point3d is a subclass of point and is involved in the implementation of a point3d. We have already seen the main method in this class. The inherited protected method can be called as well as the public method. Now let's have a look at the caller method. Here we have an instance of class A. Because the caller method is not part of the implementation of class A, it is only part of the implementation of a subclass, thus it cannot call the protected method on this instance. What we can do is to call this method on an object that is an instance of class extends class A that is the child class or on an object that is an instance of a subclass of this class. Let's try this one. In these examples, we call the protected method on the actual object. We call it using the super keyword which means the same as the previous because we have not overridden the method in this chart class. We call the method on a different object that is an instance of the class extends class A class and also on an object that is the instance of an anonymous class that is technically the subclass of our example class. These are all valid and allowed invocation. Visualizing it, we have a class and another class that extends the class A. And the second class is in a different package. The code in this class cannot call a protected method in class A on an object that is the instance of class A, even though the calling code is in a class that extends the class A. That is because you can only call protected methods from a code that implements the class on which you call the method. On the other hand, we can call the same method on the subclass as it is inherited from a class A. In this case, the calling code is part of the implementation of the class on which we call the protected method. There is another important thing to understand with protected fields, methods and other members. You can access them in the same package, but only if they are defined in the same package. When a class extends another from a different package, 
and that way it inherits a protected member, for example, a method, then a code which is in a different class, but in the same package as the child class, cannot access the inherited member. On the other hand, if the child class overrides the inherited member, then the code in a different class in the package where the child is can access the member. Even if the inherited protected method is overridden simply doing nothing else but calling the same method on the super referencing the parent class, this makes the method visible in the package where the child class is. In this example, we have the classes that we had before, but in this example, we also have a protected method called protected method to override. This method is overridden in the subclass. We also have a class named calling class also in the package B. From this class, we can call the overridden method because it is protected and is defined in the same package as the calling code. But at the same time, we cannot call the method which is protected, defined in a different package and is only inherited by the class in the same package. We cannot call this method even on the subclass. This method is not in the same package. It is protected and the calling code is not part of the implementation of the subclass. This diagram shows this in a visual format. We have the two classes in two different packages and we also have a calling code in a class in the other package. The calling code cannot call the inherited protected method but it can call the one that is overridden because with the act of overriding, the method is defined in the same package. The statement that public members and constructors are visible in the whole Java program was only true and only partially before Java 9. Partially because you can only access a public member if the member is inside of a class that is also visible from outside. And it is not the absolute truth after Java 8 because public members are visible only if we do not use Java platform module system or the module exports the package that contains the class that contains the public member. In this example, our class named class A is not public. It has package access and thus only visible from within the same package. The calling class does not have access to the class itself and thus it cannot call the method on the class. Simply, we cannot even call the constructor to have an instance. However, this is not the end of it. We can have other means to get a reference to an instance of a class, not only calling the constructor. There are many ways. For example, we can have a factory that creates an instance and returns it to us. The factory is a public class and is as simple as you can see on the screen. Now we can have a reference to an instance of class A and thanks to the type inference introduced in Java 10 using the var predefined type, we have a local variable that is the type of class A even though this type is not visible in this class. The variable sut is of the type class A, but we cannot call the private method. 
However, if we create a class B that extends class A in the package where class A is, and we create an instance of class B and not class A, then we are all fine. And the red underlying signaling of the error just disappeared. As a summary, you can call or access a public member if you can get access through all the surrounding classes the member is in. The fact that public classes and members are visible from anywhere in the whole program before Java 9 Java Platform Module System was actually a big problem. Libraries offering an API to the library client code calling the API had no means to hide the code that was meant to be public only from within the library. The developers using the library started to use the classes and interfaces that were not part of the API but were available. This is an issue when you start to use some functionality of a library or framework that is not part of the API but rather part of the implementation. Any library should be free to modify the implementation without affecting users of the library. Java Platform Module System introduced modules and every module should have a module info Java file that defines which packages are exported from the module. In other modules only those public classes are visible that are either inside the actual module or are exported from some of the other modules and the current module requires them. In this example, we have class A and class B. Both are public and both have a public method. They are defined in the module module.exporting. This module, however, exports only one of these packages. It exports the package that class A is in and does not export the package that contains class B. There is another module, module.using. This module requires the module, module.exporting. That way the class calling class can call the public method of class A. It cannot call the public method of the public class class B because it is in a different package that is not exported by the module. This is just a simple example. And the Java platform module system is much more complex than this. Here we only scratched the surface a bit to demonstrate that after a GPMS, public is not that public anymore. With this, we have reached the end of the subject of this tutorial. But you should remember that what you already knew about private, protected, public and the package access level is more or less correct. Generally, what you know is not wrong, just this is not the whole picture. Private is visible from other classes if in the same file. Not specifying any access modifier is package access only in classes, but it is public in interfaces and protected can be referenced in different package only from code that implements the extending class. In addition to that, there is Java platform module system that introduces encapsulation on the module level, thus adding another layer, hiding public classes and methods that are in non-exported packages. There are also topics that are not discussed in this tutorial. For example, how the access levels can be modified 
in extending classes. How the GVM implements private access between separate inner classes, creating synthetic bridge methods or using class nesting in newer GVMs. What happens if we call a public method, but later the class containing the invoked method is changed and recompiled, and the method is not public anymore? These are advanced topics that are far beyond the scope of this tutorial. Keep on learning and do not be satisfied with just working level rudimentary knowledge.